What's going on, friends? How's everyone doing? So, uh, today, I wanted to talk about really one of my favorite YouTubers. I'm going to say that just right out the gate. I mean, I have a long history with Rob Chapman. Uh, dates back, what, 2009-ish when I started watching some of his videos here on YouTube. Uh, I think the first video of his that I watched um, was uh, he, he did a demo from his house of a Vox night train. Uh, you remember those little silver heads? God, I want to get one of those, but really I have these AC, you know, 1530 over there. There's really no reason to get one, but they were really cool amps, actually. Uh, they were kind of gainier than most of the regular boxes. Anyways, um, <clears throat> so Rob did this silly little video and, you know, as most of these lunchbox heads and, you know, I have a bunch of them, um, they, they come with these little bags, right? Well, Rob was, was pulling out, uh, so he'd pull out the amp and he'd show you whatever else was in the bag. And then he started pulling out a mug and then he pulled out a monkey and all, all kinds of crazy shit that, uh, is just Rob. And it was just kind of my first foray into, uh, watching Rob be Rob. So, I mean, it, it was great to watch that. This comes with some very interesting goodies. For a start, you get your power lead. Second of all, you get a warranty card and an instructions manual, very handy. You also get a cleaning cloth, which is very useful because the brushed steel chassis often needs cleaning to keep up appearances. Of course, you get a shoulder strap and you get the pad and a monkey and a large mug magic people uh in 2009 and it, it just kind of you know it kind of showed exactly who rob was and then uh really musically um i really saw his talent when he when he did this kind of acoustic version of one of his tunes called in the sunshine i even think it was the first time i heard that song live out of the sunshine Um, he was doing it on one of his faith guitars that I just still don't know if he uh, sponsors them or not. Um, but yeah, I mean, he, I mean, he could sing, play guitar, really awesome. Um, yeah, it's just a great version of that, you know, acoustically all stripped down and you could just hear the bluesy roots of it. And it was just great. And then, you know, he's gone on he's done just tons of videos. So then he went on to Anderson's and did all the Anderson stuff, um, through, you know, several years, demo and gear. And I bought tons of crap because of their videos. Um, one piece of gear in particular that I regret selling was an orange uh, OR 15. Uh, that amp is awesome. If you guys have not played that amp, the, the harmonic structuring of that amp and the gain and the overtones of that amp is just so outstanding. It sounds so good. Uh, I recommend going to try one of those. I, I sold the stupid amp and uh, I'll probably have to buy another one. It's it, it was uh, so I regret selling that. Um, but um, probably the, my two favorite videos that he did uh, with Lee and, and Anderson's music dot co dot UK uh, was, uh, the tone ranger one where they were doing, uh, the Chapman ML one Lee signature series guitar where they dressed up as the lone ranger and Tonto and did their little spoof off that. That was, that was pretty cool. <laughs> It's either that one or obviously, you know, I think it's pretty much most everyone's favorite is, is the Miku, uh, every breath you take, (laughs) 
version of that. And I'll play, I'll play little clips of all these. Cause I, I just think they're hilarious. Um, I mean, he's gone on. He's done shit tons of musical projects uh, that he's been successful with, with the solo stuff, or if it's Dorje. Obviously, through Rob and, and Dorje, I uh, got introduced to Rabia Masad. And that guy is a freaking monster. Um, he absolutely is a crushing beast on the guitar. Fuck, Bia, stay in your lane. Um, and I love all that stuff. And now he's doing this clockwork wolf and company. And really, it's back to his roots. And I absolutely love that. I mean, this is his guitar playing style that of the stuff that he does. I mean, Dorje is awesome. And a lot of that musical stuff that he likes to really riff heavy on is awesome. But that hard rock, bluesy root stuff is really his bread and butter. And uh, it's cool to see him playing P90 guitars, uh, guitars with P90s in them, and just really embracing that sound because I, I just think he sounds the best when he's doing that stuff. I mean, Rob's gone on to start a guitar company, right? I mean, how many of us can can say that? So he was a successful YouTuber, and now he's gone on to, um, you know, make guitars, and and they don't suck. They just don't suck. They're they're nice guitars. And uh, have, have some people had some issues with them? Sure. Um, you know, I have a clip here of Rob even admitting um, that uh, it, it's good to see him explain as to, you know, the guitars aren't set up properly. And uh, he has contractual agreements with, you know, the guitar centers of the world or Anderson's for that matter, or any retailer, Toman or any of those that are selling his guitars to set the guitars up. Is Yanis Robbins. Why are Chapman guitars set up so badly from the factory? My ML3 Pro had basically no setup. Well, that makes me sad. Um, Chapman guitars are set up at the factory as in they're strung the neck should be straight and that's it. But the, here's how it works. Chapman guitars are made to order for the retailers. So, I don't know, Toman buys 500 guitars. They buy them direct from the factory and they are made to order for Toman. Toman gets the guitars and we give our retailers a really big margin. Like, I'm talking a quarter to a third more than almost all of our competitors. And we do that because 50% of this company is owned by Lee Anderton, who's a retailer who knows how difficult it is to be a guitar store. So we try and look after them because they sell our guitars. But in return for a whopping big cut on the guitar sale, they have to have an in-store tech that sets them all up. So if you receive a guitar from a store and it's not been set up, then that store hasn't done its job. And I would ask you to tell me which store you bought it from. And I would also ask that you tell them to set it up. It is their responsibility. Like whenever you buy anything, 
it is the responsibility of the, of the retailer that you purchased it from to see you right. So I'm sorry that it wasn't set up and it annoys me because it's my family name, <laughs> but it's the retailer's responsibility and we pay them. So if, if that's in the price uh, for these retailers to purchase these guitars and set them up when they receive them and they don't do that, you know, I, I have a problem with that. And I can see uh, Rob's frustration with that because his name is on those guitars. And if he's relying on these retailers to set up his guitars correctly, um, uh, th that's a problem, you know? So um, that's just my take on that. So, uh, so Rob's had his uh, fair share of challenges and critics, right? as most successful people do, um, you know, he's had this whole little fiasco deal, um, with a few of the online, uh, YouTuber guys, uh, that have called him out for his charity work. And there's been strange threats and stuff. And I, I just, I don't get it. I don't understand it. You know, uh, there, there should be no room for all this hatred in the guitar community. There's, there's plenty of room for all of us. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not knocking anyone's guitar skills or talents. I mean, Lord knows I, I have plenty that I can work on to get a lot better. You know, I know what a good guitarist looks like. That's how, that's how, that's how much talent I have on guitar. Doesn't mean I could play it worth a shit, but I have played it enough and understand the, the instrument enough to know what a good guitarist looks like. So, uh, that, that's, that's my take on, uh, uh, understanding my own guitar talents. Um, but you know, I just have a lot of <clears throat> similarities to Rob, you know, we're essentially the exact same age. Um, uh, we both were born in 1975. Uh, we both have families. We've both been divorced. You know, I, I have a lot in common with Rob for someone I've never met and I've only known online through the years and all his, uh, YouTube stuff. So, um, I mean, he's, he's gone through, uh, the fallout stuff with Rift city and, uh, kind of the fallout of all that. And, um, you know, he's gotten himself into some hot water with some of the Tonewood series stuff. Uh, I, you know, I, I get what he's getting at. Um, obviously it, it always applies more acoustically than electrically when it comes to the woods. I'm more in the camp that the, the guitar is a system. I, I agree with Rob on that point, but, uh, I, because it's an electric guitar and everything's coming through the wires and it's, and it's all electrical and magnetic. It, it's mostly about the strings, the pickups, the amplifier, the speakers, especially, uh, that's generating the sound coming out of the instrument. Uh, the wood for me, is more about the feel of the instrument, um, the resonance of the instrument. And, you know, I, I believe a well-made guitar made out of wood and assembled correctly resonates a certain way. And I do believe that translates. So, I mean, that's my take on the tone wood stuff. He's been in hot water for that. So, <laughs> so he's had his fair share of, uh, of, uh, online critics for sure. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't know that he handled all that stuff, all that great. I think if he had to redo it, he would go back and change a lot of things about that. And I know videos have been taken down and he's probably put most of that crap behind him and I, I don't blame him. It just, uh, it, it, it's not positive and it doesn't shed a good light on him or anyone else. So. I don't blame him for not harping on that stuff. It doesn't, doesn't help anything. So, so, uh, so that leads us into this guitar that's behind us. So I've owned three Chapman guitars now. Um, I only, own, I only have one left. So I bought a, I want to say it was a 2014 ML one. And it was like the smoke black version. Um, so it had a maple cap that was like a, a smoky black over the top. I think it was all mahogany everywhere else. And then an ebony fretboard. 
Um, so I've owned that one and it was a, an HSS style ML one. Um, it had a lot of lacquer on it. Oh, it was, it was a heavy guitar. It had a lot of lacquer and I just couldn't quite bond with it. And I, it had tuning instability issues with it a little bit. And I'll get into that a little bit with this guitar behind me. Um, it doesn't have it as bad, but I'll, I'll get into it. Uh, then I owned a Chapman ML three Rob Chapman signature series. I, I bought one used. I got a good deal on it. And it was the like cherry red one. And it had the nice natural finish to the wood. I th- think the neck still had a satin finish though to it. But oh my God, that thing weighed. I want to say that was an 11 pound guitar. 11, at least 10 and a half pounds, maybe 11 pound guitar. It was really, really heavy. And I just couldn't bond with that thing. It, uh, it stayed in tune a little better. I still had a little bit of the tuning issues, um, but it was just way too damn heavy. Really cool guitar, but way too damn heavy. Uh, both those guitars were really well-constructed guitars. And then uh, just recently, um, I wanted to... <clears throat> I wanted to get another Chapman. I wanted, I wanted to own one. I, you know, I appreciate Rob enough and his guitar company and and what he stands for that. I wanted to have a Chapman of my own. So I bought a used, uh, 2015 ML one, uh, with the Walnut body. So here we are again, the Tonewood series. So, here it is. So it, uh, so this is all walnut, walnut body, big, thick slab. Uh, it's an HSS. So it has a nice, uh, maple neck, ebony fretboard, 22 frets. Um, what else can I say about it? It's, uh, it's, it's been, uh, abused. It's, uh, it was not treated well. Um, so I almost feel like I'm adopting this guitar. Like it just wasn't treated right. So, um, funny enough, I don't know if you can look at this, but, uh, I don't know how well this is going to show up either, but if you can, here, let me, let me turn it the other way. There. If you, if you look closely and the keen sighted of you will see that whoever owned this guitar before me strung the strings backwards on the tuning pegs. So they're pulling away very strangely. Um, these strings are so rusty. Uh, you know, you can almost, I can almost see it on the camera, just how rusty. And I, I'm not a guy that always has to have new strings on a guitar, but when they turn rusty, that's when they got to go. Uh, and these are beyond rusty. They're, they're so gross. I don't even want to play it, but I wanted to make this video, uh, with the guitar in its current state, uh, before, before I took it apart, but I, I'm so ready to, to make some improvements to the guitar. Um, another, another thing it's doing, if I can get it in camera is uh yeah so here we go watch this oh yeah yeah it's uh it's not doing the push pull thing very well when the knob just comes off so we'll have to come up with a solution for that um and then it just has abuse i don't know if you guys can see that i don't mind some nicks and dings on the guitar but This is like abuse, like it just fell over off a guitar stand or something abuse. And and that's just shameful. I don't like to see that in a guitar. You know, it has some nicks and dings on the edges, and I love that. You know, and this is a natural finished wood guitar, which are always my favorite. You know, I've already started to work on the neck to take a lot of the finish off on the neck because I don't like a finish on the neck. I don't really like a finish anywhere on it, so... Um, so things I'm going to do to this guitar, um, 
Well, I'm definitely going to replace these knobs. Um, I'll show you some photos of the electronics in here. I mean, they're, they're, you know, it's, it's well shielded. It, uh, you know, this Wilkinson bridge, it's, you know, nice steel block. It's, it's nice. It's good. Uh, I'm going to replace the pickups. I'm not in love with the sound, uh, coming out of the pickups. So I'm going to do a JB in the bridge. It's always my favorite. I'm going to do a little 59 in the neck, and then I'm going to use one of those stacked single coils from DiMarzio, which is an Area 58. I love the sound of those. They're the most stratty sounding stacked uh, single coils I've ever heard. So, And they sound great. I mean, they sound really good. So I'll leave the switching the way it is. Hopefully I can rewire this thing the same way it's wired. It's, it's a very goofy setup because it has that three-way switch. And I'm not a huge fan of these toggle switches. I think they're uh, prone to, to falling apart. They're, they're not as good as the tele switches or the strat switches. Um, another problem I have is the low E string has a bad buzz in it. And the neck bow is it's fairly straight. You know, I have the neck set. I, I tightened it a little bit just to see. But I think the nut might not be cut very well. And I may not be able to fix that. So... I may have to get a new tusk nut for it. And then the final thing, which let's talk about, because I, I think uh, it's a pretty common problem I've had with all three of these Chapman guitars. And I think, I don't, I don't know if Rabia was the one to figure it out or what, but it's the string trees. So, you know, this is a Strat style guitar, so there's no break angle in the neck. So the, the neck isn't isn't bending back, right? Doesn't have a, a good break angle on it. So you kind of need these string trees. Well, because the headstock's reversed, right? Because the headstock's reversed, you got the string trees on the other side of the neck. And so these are wound strings. So the, the winding goes around like the low E string. You got a winding of 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 metal around the other, the, the string through it. So I think it causes buildup of, you know, there's some tension through the string trees. So when you bend a string, there's a higher potential chance of probability that it's going to pull itself out of tune a little bit. Um, this guitar has been better than my other two that I had, uh, as far as the string trees go, but uh, that's, that's another thing I'm going to do. I'm going to replace the tuners and get staggered tuners. Uh, so that'll help with the break angle some. And then I bought some of these fender style string trees that have the, you know, these are roller style. So it'll allow it to glide a little bit through the string tree rather than just a hard, you know, pinch down piece of metal. So Anything to get rid of a little bit of extra friction or anything that's going to potentially pull strings out of tune. You know, I recommend doing to all your guitars. So, um, what I do love about this guitar is the wood and, and the CNCing of the machining of it. And, you know, this is a pretty heavy guitar, but not too bad. It's not as heavy as my other two Chapmans. So that, that's good news. Uh, it has good balance and, and I'm looking forward to really, um, upgrading this thing and, and turning it into a player and just getting uh, it treated better. So, so I mean, I, I definitely have an affinity for Rob, um, you know, dates back to his early videos. And, you know, I, I found Rob in, in a time and place when I wasn't playing a whole lot of music. Um, guitar was, was, at best a hobby at that point. And, uh, it's still a hobby for me. I mean, I, I play music as, as much as I can, but it's still a hobby. Um, but I pretty much stopped playing. I definitely stopped playing live. Uh, and I didn't, I didn't play a lot live before then, but Rob came at a great time in my life, uh, around two, th sort of 2009, uh, when I started watching some of his videos and, and he was very inspiring. Uh, just to pick up the instrument again and to start playing it.
and playing it because you enjoyed it. And it really lit that spark again for me. And, and it was really important. And he was instrumental uh, for that. And for that, Rob, I, I absolutely thank you. Um, you know, I'm an okay guitarist. I, I, you know, whatever the hell that means. Uh, you know, I, I learned to play. I, I, can I play most things on the radio? Sure. Um, can I play uh, next to Steve Vai? Hell no. Of course I can't. Uh, but uh, I love music. And to see his passion for music uh, re- reignited my uh, desire to, to play it again. So um, I just think he's an amazing artist. And, and I, and I don't throw that term around lightly. Um, there's a lot of music out there that, uh, is just that it's music. I like to listen to the music when it becomes art and, and he has a great way of presenting that to us. So that's definitely my, my feelings for Rob and, and kind of the spot that he led me out of, uh, back in 2009 and, in all sincerity, I mean, he's he's kind of the impetus uh, for me in my life of, you know, me wanting to get passionate about making my own guitars, making YouTube videos, making my own music again. I mean, it's very inspirational for me. So uh, I'm grateful for that. You know, <clears throat> I've seen him go through some stuff through the years uh, with his divorce. You know, I've seen videos of him in different phases, him with different haircuts, you know, and, uh, I love all versions of, and, uh, he's just a great human being. And I think he's, uh, amazing. Uh, is he flawed like the rest of us? Yes, sure is. So Rob, I, I don't say the word chassis. I say chassis. I don't say the word schedule. I say schedule. Uh, I don't say the word shout out, but now I do. Um, that's all because of you guys, uh, pounds referring to currency and not weight. You gave me that, uh, stones referring to weight and not the rocks, um, valves referring to tubes, plectrums referring to picks. Yeah. Give me some culture. Lord knows I need that. But, uh, Rob, if you watch this buddy, please keep doing what you're doing. Know that, uh, we're out here and I love watching your stuff and, uh, you just keep being you and I'll keep supporting you as best I can, bud. Uh, best to you and your family. Uh, take care. Here's to a, uh, successful rest of 2021, uh, rolling into 2022. Uh, let's make this world a better place, people. Uh, take care. God bless. I'll see you guys all soon. Thanks. See ya. Yeah.